Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very sorry I cannot be with you in Benask today. And thank you very much to the organizer for this opportunity to give this video talk. So I'll be talking today about photonic spin hole effect in plasmonics and metamaterials. But photonic spin hole effect is extremely general um, optical effect. It happens in all kinds of optical system. And in particular, it is important for nanoscale optical systems. So what is that? So if you look, what is spin hole effect um, in semiconductor is? So in semiconductor, so if you have a piece of semiconductor and you apply electric current through the, um, if you send electric current through the semiconductor, then electrons with different spin up and up and down will, will be separated in different direction when they progress through um, through this semiconductor. And it's called spin hole effect because it does not require any magnetic field, it's just interaction between spin orbital, uh, 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 spin and orbital degree of freedom, so-called spin orbit coupling. So this effect was predicted long, long time ago by Diakonov and Perel, and then it was uh, demonstrated experimentally. And now when you open FISREF B magazine, for example, every week you will find several articles on this effect, this electronic spin hole effect. So can this spin hole effect be present in optics? So in optics, we know that um, spin can be associated with circular polarization of light. So it can be left circular polarization or right circular polarization. They will be determined by different orientation of spin, uh, spin of photon. Similarly, orbital momentum can be um, associated with light just as in conventional mechanics, if you have um, center of coordinates, we have momentum of our light wave vector and associated with this will be orbital angular momentum of, of light, this so-called extrinsic, uh, intrin extrinsic orbital momentum. There is also intrinsic orbital momentum associated with complex beam, sh uh, beam shapes, but we'll be not talking about this um, in this presentation. So what we want to consider is spin angular momentum, extrinsic orbital momentum, and want to see if we can um, achieve spin orbit coupling between, between them. And indeed, this can be achieved, and it was recently demonstrated, especially year 2013, was extremely fruitful for um, studies of this spin orbital coupling in photonics. You can see several um, articles um, um, about spin orbit coupling in plasmonic structures, in metamaterial structures, but initially it was proposed even before 2013. Um, Kostya Bloch and Coases they um, predicted the spin orbital coupling for nanostructures um, several years before. Okay, so we start now with considering this photonic spin hole effect in. Um, plasmonics, so although it's valid for plasmonics, for waveguides, for fibers, for photonic crystals, um, the simplest way to introduce it considering near field interference in plasmonic structures. So what we have in plasmonic structures, we have here metal film and we have dipole radiated next to a metal film and we know that dip if dipole is in near field proximity to the metal film, then some components of dipole radiation can be coupled to surface plasma polariton, where wave vector of surface plasma polariton correspond to wave vector of um, radiated by, by the dipole in the near field. And we know very well um, this um, dispersion relation for surface plasma polariton and how light can be coupled to this surface, surface wave on metal dielectric interface. So this can happen for dipole oscillating vertically near the surface or horizontally near the surface. Same way you can achieve, you can achieve this excitation of surface plasma polariton. So what happens if we have circularly polarized dipole? Because if we want to introduce spin, we have to have circularly polarized dipole. Then circularly polarized dipole can be separated in dipole which oscillates vertically next to a surface and dipole which oscillates horizontally next to a surface. And if you look at the wave vector components of this dipole, then we will see the dipole that oscillates vertically to the surface. It has um, both far field components, propagating components, and near field components, which are evanescent components. They do not propagate in the far field. And, um, 
to the left and to the right of the dipole, these components have different, uh, different sign, sign of amplitude. If you consider dipole oscillation, oscillating horizontally to the surface, it has also certain components, but these components does not depend on direction to the left or to the right. So now, if we, using these two linear dipole, construct circularly polarized dipole, we will see that in this circularly polarized dipole, essentially rotating dipole around its, um, its center, we'll see that there will be interference between two different uh, wave vector components so that in, in this example to the right amplitude of the components will be close to zero in the near field and to the left amplitude components will be um, enhanced. So it means that if we have now the circularly polarized dipole oscillating next to the metal uh, to the metal surface, then it will excite surface polaritons only to the left, but not to the right, because to the right, the amplitude of a uh, dipolar field is very, very small. And this leads to opportunity to achieve this unidirectional excitation of surface plasma polariton if we have scattery dipole oscillating next to the metal surface. And this consideration is valid not only in plasmonics, it's valid in all kinds of all kinds of systems. It could be surface plasma polariton, could be wave-guided modes in the fiber, wave-guided modes in silicon photonics. So in this example, we will see circular dipole radiating in the free space, then circular dipole radiating next to dielectric waveguide, and still you can see the, the, the directional excitation of wave-guided mode, and dipole um, radiating next to the metal surface, and again, as we already saw, there is this directional excitation. So now, if we can change helicity of this dipole from left circular polarized to right circular polarized, obviously we'll change direction of propagation of this wave-guided mode. And this extremely useful functionality for, for nanophotonics. So, we, we describe this effect theoretically, so how it looks experimentally. So in the first experiments that we have done, we used just metal film and slit in metal film to emulate the circularly polarized dipole. So we have slit in a metal film, very small slit, very thin slit, and then we eliminate the slit at gradient incidence in circular polarized light, and this uh, situation then, um, this geometry will emulate uh, the circular polarized dipole emission near the metal surface. And in this case, you can see immediately from this uh, just direct imaging uh, of the um, output, um, our, our output where when we record surface plasma polariton through leakage radiation, we'll see that for linear polarization, we have surface polariton excited to the left and to the right, and for left circular polarization, it's excited to the left, and for right circular polarization, it's excited uh, to the right. So similarly, if we have not one slit by grating, we have exactly the same effect. So if we if eliminate grating with circular polarized light, we can control directionality by controlling helicity of emitted light. So this were first experiments for like two-dimensional dipole emulated with thin slit in gold film. So then we can move to kind of three-dimensional situation when we have gold film supporting surface plasma polariton, and we have just one 60 nanometer gold nanoparticle sitting on, to on top of the surface. And again, in this movie, what you see, you see we record a uh, movie how surface plasma polariton propagates from the, from, from the particle and the change in polarization of excitation light. And if you have linear polarization, surface polariton excited in, in both direction, left circular polarization, one direction, right circular polarization, opposite direction. So we can use control, just controlling polarization of illuminating light, we can control directionality of excitation of surface plasma polarity, so we can achieve this polarization splitting with a single 60, 60 nanometers particle. Yeah? And this effect, as I said, it's universal for fibers, for surface plasma polariton, as well as metamaterials. So in this example, if we have these metamaterials composed of gold dielectric um, multilayer, so it behaves like hyperbolic metamaterial, and hyperbolic metamaterial slab can support this very strongly confined wave-guided motor. You can see at the top, 
at the top of the screen. And if this wave guided modes are excited with linear polarized dipole, they excited both direction and we have circular polarized dipole, then we can control directionality of excitation. So this would be for one polarization of light, but but for a hyperbolic material, which is an isotropic material, there could be other type of dispersion, elliptical dispersion, where materials also support a uh, wave-guided mode, but not so strongly confined. But this uh, uh, control of polarization works for both hyperbolic modes and conventional elliptical modes. Just confinement is different, but directionality you still uh, can control. Yeah? And this experimental example of hyperbolic material, but not in optical, but radio frequency domain. Because in radio frequency domain, in this example, it was for valence of 10 meters. You can build hyperbolic material just combining resistors, inductors, and capacitors. And if you choose nominals correctly, that it will behave as hyperbolic material. So in this case, so we have this uh, material, and we have radiating dipole just in the center of material is indicated at the left. And if this dipole is linear, then we excite uh, modes in all directions, to left and to right. But if it's circularly polarized, we can excite uh, mode in one direction for left circularly polarized and another direction for right circularly polarized. So top row of the images here, they show experiment and bottom shows modeling, or maybe other way around, because the correspondence between them are so good that I don't really remember which is which. So probably, probably top row is experiment, but, uh, but if you check um, the article, you will find out exactly what, what it is. Yeah? So we have now this photonic spin hole effects that allows us to control directionality. So, but optics is reciprocal. So can we achieve inverse photonic spin hole effect? And indeed, we can try to do this. So in this example, what we see exactly what we discussed a couple of minutes ago, we have a gold surface, we have nanoparticles sitting on gold surface, and this nanoparticle is illuminated with a left circular polarized light, and this leads to excitation of surface plasma polarized on to the left. So in the reciprocal configuration, we consider exactly the same situation, gold surface, gold nanoparticle, but now we excite surface plasma polariton externally and let it propagate towards the nanoparticle and then scatter of the nanoparticle. And then if inverse photonic spin hole effect works, then we should achieve a generation of, um, or, or, or scattering of the surface polariton of uh, this metal particle with left circularly polarized excitation in that particular particular direction. So if we do experiments, yes, optics is reciprocal, so everything works. So at top images you will see direct spin hole effects. Essentially um, the, this images is just snapshot of the movies that you showed before uh, when we illuminate particle with circular polarized light and change polarization. And at the bottom, it's reciprocal configuration. We excite surface plasma polariton through total internal reflection configuration, let it propagate toward nanoparticle, and then we record polarization state, which is scattered in particular direction. And then if we now start changing direction in which surface plasma polariton is impinged onto nanoparticle, uh, we change polarization of um, scattered light. So we go from left circular polarized to linear polarized, then to right circular polarized light. And this extremely non-trivial effect, so-called inverse photonic spin hole effects, which related actually to particular, very unusual state of polarization of light in surface plasma polariton, which actually indeed present in all kinds of waves that have evanescent components, so-called transverse spin uh, transverse spin, spin of light. Because usually, if we have um, free space propagating light, you have wave vector in that direction, then electric field rotates around the wave vector. So if you look how spin, uh, spin vector is oriented, it's always oriented along the k vector. So in free space, you always have uh, this longitudinal space. A longitudinal spin, wave vector spin is in the same direction. However, 
in evanescent wave in surface plasma polarity, and in particular, spin is oriented perpendicular to the wave vector. Yeah? So, because electric field is uh, rotating in this direction, so orientation of spin is uh, in transverse direction. So, you have this transverse spin, and this transverse spin leads to this very interesting effect of inverse photonic spin hole effect. And this can be understood just considering just scattering from a particle, just imaginary situation when we have just nanoparticle in free space and then we have conventional um, uh, propagating light in free space which has a longitudinal spin and when it's scattered you will see it's scattered primarily uh, with linear polarization. Yeah? So now if we have circular polarized light but again, uh, sorry, in, in the first case it was linear polarized light. So in the second case we have uh, the circular polarized light. And then scattering of circular polarized light with longitudinal spin, you will see that polarization state does not change much. So the same spin is scattered in forward direction and opposite skin spin is scattered in a backward direction. However, if you assume that you have light with transverse spin, with evanescent wave, then the scattering properties are completely changed and you will see that light of different handedness scattered to the left or to the right. So it means that by controlling direction at which your evanescent wave in which, in which surface plasma polariton um, is impinging of your nanoparticle, you can select polarization of light that is, that is scattered. Yeah? So this extremely unusual effect, this transverse uh, spin in optical wave, but it always happens uh, if you have evanescent components of, of, of the wave, as in surface plasma polariton, waveguide, or metamaterials, or optical fiber. Uh, just to illustrate this in the case of surface plasma polariton, what you see here, you will see here surface plasma polariton propagating a metal air interface in a direction uh, in one direction, and then little rotating arrow indicates direction in which rotates electric field in surface plasma polariton wave. And you see it rotates always in the same direction, and in order to change direction, you have to change direction of propagation of surface plasma polariton. Otherwise, your direction of your wave vector completely determines direction in which um, your electric field rotates in surface plasma polarity and so essentially determines headedness of, uh, of surface plasma plasma polarity field. Okay, so so far we considered just optical properties of these spin hole effects. How can they be useful beyond optics? So I would like to give the example of so-called lateral optical force. So optical forces are very well known. You shine light. Uh, onto a comet, and comet tail will be oriented um, um, in, in the direction opposite to light because light exhibit pressure. You can use optical tweezers, then you have strong gradient of optical field, and then you can trap particle within this gradient field, and you can move it in whatever direction you want, yes? But the question is, can we achieve lateral optical force which acts in the direction perpendicular to the wave vector but without field gradient. And indeed we can. So in this case, you see the, the, the image that you saw before. So there is gold surface, gold particle, and we shine light, circular polarized light on this gold particle, and we excite surface plasma polarity on to the left. So now if we change handedness of this uh, so, so, so we excite surface pol plasma polariton to the left, but if we excite surface plasma polariton to the left, it means that there is recoil force acting on a particle, and this recoil force will be acting to the right. So now if we change polarization, then we can change direction which surface plasma polariton is excited. It means that we can change direction in which recoil force is acting. And this is exactly the case if you do exact simulations. Okay, it's a little bit more complex because there are also some forces associated with image dipole. But in principle, exact simulation shows that if you have this situation, metal particle on top of 
plasmonic surface, then by controlling polarization of light, you can exert lateral optical force on this particle. So it means that you can mass manipulate particles to the left, to right, to sort particles just by shining circular polarized light. And you can achieve, you, you can move not just one particle that it happens with optical tweezers, but you can have many particles they are in the illumina illuminated field. And value of this force, magnitude of the force, is very close, a similar order of magnitude that, um, that, um, of all other optical forces that you can achieve uh, this, this light. And just to finish, I would like to go back to this mater material example that I showed you before. So in, if you now consider the same logic for material, so now, uh, in the mater metamaterial, we excite this wave-guided mode, but within metamaterial slab, they do not directly go along the slab, they go at some angle. So does it mean that we can achieve, if you look at the top, top image here, so we have excitation uh, of this wave-guided mode at some angle, but they have component uh, perpendicular to the surface of the metamaterial. So does it mean that in this situation we can achieve um, repulsive optical force, so which will push particle away from metamaterial. So again, the simple logic looks, looks perfectly fine, but if you do exact simulation, it will not work, although it works only in one condition, which is condition of epsilon near zero of the material. And it would work for material just, just for metal around plasma frequency or for semiconductor and for, and for phononic frequencies, or you can design your own metamaterial slab uh, with uh, epsilon near zero behavior, and then around this epsilon near zero frequency, you can achieve this repulsive force when you have nanoparticle next to hyperbolic metamaterial, shine light, and this nanoparticle will be repulsed. Yeah? So here you see this blue area that show where this repulsive force exists for various values of um, permittivity components of metamaterial and red force where attractive force, force exists. And now if you compare this with, uh, between metamaterials, different realization of metamaterials like silver um, or silicon carbide, which also has near zero behavior, you can see that natural material, they provide strong repulsive forces near the plasma frequency, but very, very narrow bandwidths. But if you look at metamaterial, they can provide very high bandwidths of repulsive forces, which are very interesting for application, obviously. So this brings me to conclusion. So I told you about photonic spin hole effects. So in this case, I explained this photonic spin hole effects uh, using notion of vectorial near field interference, considering interference of circular polarized dipole with itself. I showed you that we can achieve a broadband, completely wavelength independent polarization control directionality of excitation of plasmonic or wave guided modes. It could be a plasmonic mode, metamaterial mode, silicon wave guide mode, optical fibers, you name it. Anywhere where there is evanescent field, you can achieve this directionality of excitation. I showed you inverse photonic spin hole effect, and I also showed you how this can be applied to achieve uh, some exotic optical forces that acts on uh, nanoparticles near the, near the uh, wave-guided wave -guided interfaces or near the waveguides. So finally, I would like to acknowledge my colleagues and friends who contributed to this work. In particular, it would be uh, Paco Rodriguez Fortuno, which you can see uh, on the very left, and Pasha Ginsburg and Daniel O'Connor and various funding agencies. Thank you very much for your attention. Unfortunately, I cannot answer questions today, but please do send me a postcard with a question. I will answer it. Thank you very much.